the machine creates organisms automatically. Here on this axis, we have the phenotypic axis. This is what the animals are like. Here we have the environmental axis going, in this case, from water to land, deep ocean, coral reef, tide pool, shoreline, dry land. Here we're going from a ray fin fish to a coelacanth to various lobe fin fish, one of which here is acanthostega, which I just showed you, ichthyostega, a famous uh, more advanced amphibian, and then finally tularpeton here, which is a full-fledged land-going amphibian. So we're going again, to give you the big picture, from fins to legs here, and we're going from the deep ocean to the dry land here. Now the vertical axis represents decreasing fitness. Up. So if you're high, you die. If you're low, you go. In other words, you live. If you're high, you die, you're up on what I call the peaks of death. And if you're down low in what I call the valley of survival, that means you are fit, you are well adapted to your environment. Now watch how this works. Let's say you're here in phase space. Can you do the three-dimensional uh, math? Okay, what are you? You're a, you're a ray fin fish, okay, you're a fish. Where are you? You're on dry land, so you are dead. You're a fish out of water, so you're dead. You are unfit for your environment. Let's do this one. What are you here? Follow it along, you're a full-fledged amphibian, but you're out in the deep blue sea, so you are dead. You are unfit. Let's do this one. What are you here? You're a ray fin fish in the deep ocean. You're beautifully adapted to your environment. And right here you'd be tularpeton on dry land but near a tide pool, so you're doing pretty well here. You're well adapted to your environment. One more here, acanthostega, that would be right here. You're a primitive amphibian living in a tide pool, trying to make a living uh, in a coral reef. Now how could he have done that? Let's explain this. Uh, right here, why do we think legs might have evolved underwater? Well, here's the theory. If, if he was out, so mom here takes a mutation in her sperm or egg cells, and that's a critical point to remember. Let's get all this stuff up here. Okay, the mutations to DNA have to take place in sperm or egg cells, otherwise they won't make it into the next generation. Remember always that the new phenotype, the new form of animal, always shows up in junior, always shows up in the offspring, and then natural selection comes into play and has to select, if this is what we're trying to evolve, has to select for this and deselect for the old type of organism. Now in the deep blue sea, do you want to have legs and toes? No, see, he would be poorly adapted. He's dead out there. You want to have fins if you're in the deep blue sea, and that's why we still have fish with us today after 400 million years. If you're living five miles deep in the ocean in pitch black water that's freezing cold at pressures that are twice what crush our nuclear submarines, what do you want to be? You don't want to be a human. You better hope to God that you're a fish down there. Okay, but here in a coral reef, see the island and so forth? Here in a coral reef, what we think could have happened is this. If you're in a coral reef, there's powerful currents going back and forth, there's algae and so forth. And one thing that you can try to do is to carry out what we would call ambush predation. You remain hidden in the algae or behind rocks and things like that, and then you leap out suddenly with your still fish-like tail and catch fish. Now you can see that if you're still a lobe fin fish right here, he's going to have a little bit of a hard time carrying out ambush predation because there's powerful currents in a coral reef that are pushing him back and forth. And if he's trying to station keep in some algae, algae, he would have to wave his fins and remain in one place, which is going to give away his location and scare the prey off. But look what he can do. He can, hang, he can do something that no animal has ever done before in evolution. He can hang on to things with his little legs and toes and remain perfectly motionless and then leap out and catch a fish. This is the theory for how uh, acanthostega may have been selected for and how legs evolved underwater. Okay, now here's uh, an animation of that process. 
There's a constant chatter of mutation to DNA that's ceaselessly generating new forms of organisms. The environment is constantly changing here. This is constantly changing. Organisms are constantly migrating or getting blown into new environments. These are the random forces which drive evolution. But what happens next now, see these are random forces. These are random mutations, totally random. Transposons are jumping around in the DNA, moving enhancers around and so forth and so on, creating chaos. Most of its birth defects, probably 99.9% .9 of all the mutations are harmful. Uh, this is random events here in the environment, plate tectonics, climate, disease, drought, all kinds of things are taking place here. This is random, this is random, but what goes on now in the machine is anything but random. Evolution is not totally random. So let's, let me now, and here, okay, I'm gonna, press on here and use even some of my time. Okay, now bear with me. I've got to bring up an animation. Okay, we'll try to put this on the whole screen. Okay, and here's what takes place in phase space. Each little dot represents a species or an individual, either one. Organisms explore evolutionary phase space now in single step mutations, and they do it with ruthless efficiency like water exploring a canyon. So what's happening here is that we start off here with a fish in the deep blue sea, mutations take place, and then you go to the next phase here in the valley of survival. And now the numbers, since they're beautifully adapted, they build up. See, they build up in number there. So now you've got more of these guys, uh, you know, lobe fin fish. They build up. And then there are so many of them. There might be 10 million, 100 million lobe fin fish in the, in the Pacific or something like that. And now you can do calculations and show that the probability of the next step, the probability of moving the right enhancer in front of, in front of the right homeotic homeobox gene or whatever, is not only possible, but it's inevitable. You can prove that it's inevitable that the next mutation will take place. And so now you get the next, uh, you start to invade the next locus. The little yellow arrows represent mutations. So see, it just keeps building up, next mutation, building up, next mutation building up next mutation. And so the organisms are tracking or coursing their way through evolutionary phase space like water through a canyon. 